And just like that, we're back again in Fusion Section 400. Matt, Jack, and Brian, full cast, full crew for this one. Uninterrupted sports conversation on the cards, but it's been a little while since we had everybody together. Jack, welcome back to the show, man. How was the international journey? Dude, it was awesome. Greece is a, it's a beautiful country. A lot of cool islands, a lot of mountains and beaches and beautiful women, so... I had a great time. Uh, I, I went to this one club in Mykonos that uh, I'm pretty sure I saw your favorite Instagram model there. You know what I mean? Like everybody there was head to toe. Like girls were getting their, their hair and makeup done before showing up to this beach club. Uh, I mean, I was sitting there with like my pina colada just on the beach in the ocean. But off to my side, there were some bougie ass people over there. Overall, though, dude, Greece is sweet. Yeah, I could, I definitely recommend it to everybody. Uh, outside of the fact that it's a pretty, pretty hefty flight over there. Uh, I, as you can see, I'm in a hotel room right now. Uh, I was trying to get home to Charleston tonight, but uh, you know, I guess the weather had other ideas. Uh, for some reason, DC had bad weather, even though every time I looked at the weather, it looked fine. And uh, yeah, here I am, just sitting in DC for the next. 12 hours so I can cop a flight at like 7 a.m. tomorrow. I will tell you, we haven't had rain all day. So I, I don't know who was reading those forecasts. That's what I was talking about. We showed up to the airport in Athens this morning, or I should say like yesterday at this point, and they were like, oh, yeah, the, the, the flights is delayed like two or three hours already because they had uh, inclement weather in D.C. And then I looked at like my, my weather app. I got the Thesda on there because I'm there every once in a while, and it's clear as hell i'm like wh wh where's the inclement weather coming from why is this plane delayed but you know that's just that goes with traveling it is what it is yeah jack i think the moral of the story here is we just have to stay away from cities named athens just bad bad juju over there bad juju in athens that's for damn sure yeah, you guys got to stay away from the uh, international travel. I mean, it just <laughs> That's sounds like it. been headache after headache between the both of you guys going on these journeys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's for damn sure. Ryan, I'm I'm happy to see you made it back from Spain. Uh, hopefully, I'll be back. You know, I'm I'm stateside now, but hopefully, I'll be back in Charleston tomorrow morning and get back to a, a regular routine of these uh, shows for everybody. Yeah, it seems like we'll be back on the cards with the regular routine. And speaking of the regular routine, that means we can start finalizing a couple of uh, guest appearances we have lining up for, for, for uh, Section 400. So definitely stay tuned to that. Some exciting guests we have lined up for you guys. So stay tuned, uh, maybe end of the month or early August. In the next couple of weeks, we got some stuff lined up. So stay tuned for that. But without further ado... Let's jump right into the mic of the week. We do it every week here at Section 400. I'm very interested to see what kind of caught your guys' eyes over the past week, what shocked you, you know, what do you want to bring up? Almost kind of like uh, show and tell is what you can call mic of the week. Uh, Brian, what do you got for us here, man? It's the degenerates up in Section 400's version of show and tell. <laughs> it, it, it really is. It's go find a sports story and bring it and bring it to life. Well, you know, it wouldn't be me if I didn't bring up the WNBA at least once a week here. And my Michael of the Week is going to be the all-star ballots because we saw Caitlin Clark lead the league in all-star votes. And I'm interested to see how many votes you guys think she had. A million. <clears throat> 50K. So right down the middle. Oh, no, you said 50K. Okay, yeah. so 700,000 <laughs> for Caitlin Clark. And it's my Michael of the Week because last year's winner, Aja Wilson, 90000 So when people say Caitlin Clark hasn't brought a lot of eyeballs to this sport, huh, that's a big difference, fellas. How many Angel Reese get? 300000 Okay. Well, she's probably not happy about that since it was just <laughs> not all about her. Yeah, seven hundred thousand. I didn't think there was going to be seven hundred thousand people voting on that period. That's can you that's, vote that's multiple wild. times? Can you do like double ballots? Yeah, I assume it's like how they do it for MLB, where you can do like ten times a day. But it it's yeah. just crazy that I mean, Aja had five hundred thousand. I think Aaliyah Boston, Caitlin Clark's teammate, had, was second with like six hundred fifty thousand. So it just goes to show you how much how Caitlin Clark has impacted the time. Yeah, Vancouver aren't even any good. 
Like why? <laughs> like why are the two girls on the Fever getting the most votes? And they're they've like, been on ESPN every other day, and they've won four games. They're actually they're around five hundred now. They've been are a lot they better. Falling their way back. Yeah, but I there think... there shouldn't <clears throat> there shouldn't be anybody above uh, Aja Wilson. And on top of that, I mean, I think that just goes to show how how snub Caitlin Clark was from that Olympic roster. I mean, she straight up got Isaiah Thomas. There's no yeah. if ands or buff bucks about it. She got Isaiah Thomas. Well, we do have the WNBA All Stars that aren't playing on the Olympic roster playing against the Olympic team in a tune up coming up. So we'll see Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese on the same team for that. that yeah, there there will be your telltale sign on if Caitlin Clark can hang with the with the Olympic roster. I mean, look, I look, we've already been over this. I called it. She got snubbed, and Brian freaked out. So <clears throat> no need to no need to touch on that anymore. I guess you're just a hater, man. I brought up a serious question that there's all this hype around her and she's probably going to get snubbed from the Olympic roster. And you looked at me like I had three heads and I, you know, like most things was right. Yeah, well, you may have been right, but in the long run, you're wrong because the whole people that made that decision were wrong. Well, we'll, we'll let the Olympics play out. Like if they have, they're going like, to win. It's there's no question win. about if they win or not. They better win. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. If they don't, then you have more, uh, more ammo, more ammo in your back pocket. I guess. I mean, they're gonna win either way. She just deserves. Yeah, I think they will. I, I think, yeah, especially on the girls' side, it's it's more of a Mickey Mouse than it is on the guys. Yeah, and a little teaser there. We'll get into some uh, some Olympic qualifying talk later on. Yeah, stay tuned for that. But Jack, let's hear your mic of the week, man. What do you got? Yeah, well, uh, staying on tune of the Olympic qualifier, we're taking it international. As you guys know, it was just in Greece. <clears throat> Greece and Giannis, you know, Giannis is Greece when it comes to uh, Greece, Greece basketball, played Luka and Slovenia the other night while I was in Greece. When I tell you I couldn't find that game on freaking anywhere, mm-hmm. I mean it. They just don't care about basketball. I'm not even joking. Giannis is on the TV playing for your country, but meanwhile, what do they have on the TV? England against fucking uh, Switzerland, whoever they yep, played in. Yeah, that was Switzerland, was Switzerland yeah. in the soccer game. I mean, football, as they like to say overseas. But come on, I mean, this is Giannis. This is like your. This is your Michael Jordan. This is your Lord and Savior. No one else is coming out of Greece like Giannis is. And you're not going to have his game on the TV. He's back. He's healthy. He's dunking on Luca. And you're not going to have him on the TV. You're going to have England soccer. I don't. Know. I don't get it. Yeah, that's my Michael. I just don't understand the international game or the international scene. You know, start caring about your people. Giannis yeah. is is your guy. I will say it's. I think it's more of a FIBA issue than it than it is for a Greece issue. They're streaming these games on like their own platform. It's called Courtside 1981 or something. It's they're not they. It's like MLB.tv. They need the they have their own broadcasting rights, and you need to buy into them. I'm sure whatever bar you were at didn't want to buy into those, but they should have, considering it was the semifinals to get into the Olympics. But yeah, it's it's on FIBA. It'd be That's one thing if like the Greece soccer team was playing, but like the fact that they weren't is just. That's that's a little disgusting, but uh, yeah, big L for Greece there. That's that's almost a loser in the week. Almost a loser of the week. Yeah, no, I mean they just, they just need to start respecting Giannis. I mean they have stores in like the airport, the Athens airport. There was a whole store dedicated to Giannis. It had a, a mural on it. He he came through and signed it uh, clearly. But you know if you're gonna show that level of appreciation at like a store in the airport why aren't we gonna watch his damn games i guess it's phoebus fault brian but if you're telling me that like team usa is playing basketball somewhere and i don't have access to that at like any bar i go to in the states they're getting fired you know yeah. what i mean i'm never showing up to that bar again yeah you're not wrong there the last let me ask you this when you went and you saw the Giannis gear was it greece national teams or was it the bucks yeah it was greece national team so they didn't they didn't have any Bucks jerseys. They didn't. I didn't, I didn't see a single Bucks jersey. Pretty interesting, right there. Yeah, you know, Brian, feel free to chime in if you got another FIBA, uh, uh, you know, anecdote well, right here. But does 
does uh, the NBA, you know, licensing, are they allowed to sell Bucks jersey in Greece? Yes, they definitely are. But I was just going to, you kind of mentioned, you took a little shot at Greece and said that it's only honest. And he is the leader of that team. But they do have a three-point specialist with the last name Pape Giannis. Uh -oh. <laughs> scored 18 today. I thought you were going to bring up Thanasis, and I was going to leave. I was just going to walk out the door. <laughs> no, I think he's actually injured. He's not even playing in these games. <laughs> I don't know how he got yeah, injured yeah. from sitting on the bench. but <laughs> yeah. Either way. Greece got to do better. They got to get the best thing that's happening to Greece right now on TV for, for a basketball game, which maybe we'll have one of the Olympics since they just qualified. There you go. But I'll jump into my mic of the weekend. It was just something that happened over the weekend. And I don't know if you guys heard of the name Jose Miranda, but that guy tied mm -hmm. the MLB record for most hits in a row. Like this guy went 12 for 12, which is wow. a tie for – that's like an MLB record tie. I mean, this guy, it's funny just because if you look at his picture, he like kind of looks like a goober. And this guy literally almost broke a very difficult record. And I think he went, the when, when he lost the record, like he tied the record and then he went two for three. And then today he went one for one. So he didn't play, but he came in for an at-bat, went one for one. So he was that close to breaking a record that probably is going to take a little while to, to break. Yeah, I know. That's impressive. You you took a slide at me the other day, called me Bad Luck Brian, and this kind of emphasizes that. A couple of years ago, I drafted Jose Miranda in fantasy baseball, and through the first two months, he hit 150 and got sent down the triple A. And he was like a fourth-round pick of mine, and now he's doing this. So don't don't love the guy just because of that, but good for him. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he almost broke uh, 12 hits in a row, like going, or it was either 11 or it was 11 12. Or 12. It was 12. Yeah. 12 for 12. Either way, that's, I mean, dude, that's like crazy. That's yeah, like going no. four for four in like three straight games. Yeah. You, if you go four for 12, you're a Hall of Famer, like let alone 12 for 12. So that's just very impressive. Good for him. I, I, I can't say that I would expect that record to be beat anytime soon, but. Shout out Jose for getting close. Yeah. Tying it. Yeah, he, uh, yeah. He, he got the last two against Hunter Brown, who's just been dominating uh, lineups lately, too. So against the whole Astro staff, that's been red hot. So. Yeah, that's a tough Impressive. that's a tough get right there. But uh, I guess we touched on it a bit, but let's get into a little soccer talk. Euros update, Copa America update. I saw Brazil lost, which was awesome. Screw them. Uh, now let's just get Argentina out of there. Yeah, hey, if uh, Uruguay can take it all the way, at least we we can say as a nation we lost to the champions. So that'd be nice. It's fair. I guess. It's always that it's always fair. a good one. Good it's moral, a good, moral good, win. It's always a good silver lining to tuck your tail between. <laughs> By the way, U.S. soccer turned off comments on the Fourth of July when they sent out Happy Fourth of July. I think Uruguay's got a good shot again, unless uh, you know. The refs are deep in Argentina's pockets for whatever reason. Well, Messi probably, but yeah. Messi. It's, I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, I was actually hoping – I saw some drama when we lost with uh, Pulisic and, uh, you know, the referees. And I just I, – I have been a little tuned out, you know, not having the uh, the regular sports updates while I was away. So what happened with that? With what? The, the, US refs, the refs just hate – Christian Pulisic and like I saw like after the game like everyone was saying we got screwed over by the refs after the game like I saw like he went up to the refs tried to shake his hand and the ref just like laughed at him and like looked away and didn't shake his hand and uh, yeah, it was I mean the refs haven't been great towards CONCACAF teams in general but we also the U.S. didn't get screwed by the refs they got screwed by Greg Berhalter and bad play but yeah the yeah, refs I mean... the refs have been bad all tournament the refs have been pretty bad, okay. but the U.S. So not, issues. not not that big of a story then. Okay. I mean, it's a story, but it's more – I mean, look, it was a bad look that the refs were horrible in that game and then didn't shake his hand after the fact. I mean, that was definitely not a great look, but I don't think there's anything anyone can really do about it other than, you know, just complain. They're not going to overturn yeah. it. Their feet is oh, not going to expose not. their own own – own referees for for corruption which we all know how corrupt that organization is so it's just one of those things where you kind of just got to take it on the chest and uh 
get a new manager in there for 2026 and let's not get embarrassed on home soil like we kind of just did uh, with it being the Copa <laughs> America at in the U.S. Yeah, and for much as I love Pulisic, uh, shout out Hershey. He is a bit of a flopper. So he, he does have flopping tendencies and crybaby tendencies. So that kind of attributed to that. Well, he does yeah. play soccer. So I don't know. I mean, you guys think England, Brian, it's getting close to coming home, dude. It is getting kind of close and I'm getting kind of worried. It's getting a little close. <laughs> it's just, I mean, if every game goes to PKs, I feel like England has enough just pure talent to win on PKs. And that seems like the trend here. I mean, no one's scoring. I don't think France has scored a real goal yet. Jack's future, Jack might win a future, and it might be another Mickey Mouse one because they only score own goals and PKs. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how France won that last game. I thought Portugal was good. They were heating up, looked like they were going to get a goal, and just France, you know, they're so strong. I I, I thought Germany was going to be it, dude. I, I guess I'm, I'm leaning Spain. I'm surprised you're not, not leaning Spain. Yeah, I mean, I'm leaning Spain, but it does scare me that England has this kind of team of destiny vibe after the Bellingham 95th minute goal, and then Switzerland scores late, and they answer right back and score late, and then winning PKs. They definitely have that team of destiny. It's coming home vibe, so that does scare they me. They do have a good team, so not sure what we want to do there, but it is getting a little close. I, I guess we root for Spain because. France winning would be shitty too. They all suck over. Yeah, there. I fucking hate the French. <laughs> They're terrible. I don't. I don't particularly love the French either. <laughs> like, there's individual players I don't mind, like Mbappe's whatever. William Saliba's electric center back. But when it comes to like the people, like the nation of France, the people of France, they're the worst. The absolute worst. The worst. No, so yeah. Bad. I'll third that. Yeah, that's, I don't that's need to squad, see them win a that's tournament. Squad ride. <laughs> These are the second four hundred squad ride. France sucks. Yeah, uh, <laughs> put that on a billboard. Our French listeners just just unsubscribe. Yeah, I'm sure they did. <laughs> All zero of them. <laughs> Brian, I just want to get a quick reaction before we jump into. Uh, you know, I know we kind of talked to, uh, some basketball, but we'll get into that now. But I just see a quick reaction on Wimbledon. Your girl Coco Golf flounders out of the tournament. You know, not great. Not a great day for Americans. Ben Sheldon also got straight setted by uh, Sinner. So not a great day. I don't think Tommy Paul's played in like two days. I don't know what's going Tommy on. Tommy Paul, that. I think, still alive. I think. Yeah, he hasn't been able to play because it's been raining. Speaking of England sucking, it just rains all the time over there. Yeah, there has been like – enormous delays on games because of the rain so that hasn't been great yeah i i kind of when i took coco i forgot how much she hates time changes and it being past her bedtime so i just i'm yeah, gonna stay away bring from that up last time you were talking about her be- <laughs> past her bedtime yeah she got mad in france because it was past her bedtime and i guess england's not too different in the time there so yeah i'll just wait for the u.s open and then coco will win that yeah she definitely can make her run there but uh like we said, Tommy Paul still alive. I think Sviatek and Djokovic are still alive. So I got that going for me. Uh, Jack, do you want to throw a Mickey Mouse one out there? <laughs> Bro, give me the yeah, give me the Joker. Djokovic is, is is my dog when it comes to tennis. My other goats have retired by now. Nadal, he he used to be my goat, but he's retired now. So give me no. Give me the Joker. A, I don't think he's officially retired. He just doesn't really? play. I oh, I know. thought I thought I he, know like uh, Federer. Federer is like done. That guy's done. I mean, he, I, I feel like he's he's doing like the uh, the Haslam, where you know he's not retired, but he is retired. Yeah, yeah. You know, but like these guys funny? will officially come out and retire, and I don't think Nadal has done that yet. Yeah, you want to know what's funny? I was definitely thinking about Federer's retirement when I said Nadal. Yeah, but... he's he's officially done. Yeah, I mean, but we're just talking straight goats right now. These guys yeah, are all of course. Just... All, Djokovic all like one all said and done, which you know could be soon. He is, I think, thirty five now, so obviously not a lot of time left because tennis is such a demanding sport on your body. So just as you get older, it's tough to keep up with that, um, and especially all these young guns, guns coming in. Like Alcaraz is already like you know he's already goaded, winning all these grand uh, major titles. Alcaraz could be the best, maybe we see, but I think right now Djokovic the best. Uh, that I've ever seen in my lifetime. So that's why I picked him. He's got, you know, very limited opportunities to go out there and get it done again. I want to see him get Wimbledon done. 
Yeah, fair enough. And I thought Nadal had retired. If he hasn't yet, and he's still got that absolute firecracker with the the wristbands and the swagger, the headband. I mean, I'd love to see him get out there in a, in a big time championship. So, yeah, that, uh, unfortunately, it sounds like he's not in this one or whatever. That yeah, I don't be, think but, he's in this tournament. But but give give me Novak, give me Novak as another Mickey Mouse play, chalk chalk as you guys <laughs> like to say. Yeah, I mean, look, I, oh, he, he he isn't. He's like the fourth favorite. Yeah, he's okay. Not, I don't know what it is now. Sinner's ahead of him. Uh, Alcaraz is ahead of him. I'm not sure if any others, but, you know, this wasn't like a, uh, you know, it's going to be a tough battle for him to uh, make his way through the tournament. But he's if there's a guy to do it, it is him. Give me Novak. Hell yeah. Speaking of, we, we're getting into a little bit of Giannis. Uh, Greece did make the Olympics, but want to touch on our boy, DeMar DeRozan, Brian. We talked about it. We said we don't know where he's going to sign. He is going to sign somewhere else other than Chicago. We just don't know where. He finally decided on the Sacramento Kings. I believe he's from Compton, so it makes sense. Go back to California. I think this is a great fit. I think it's a perfect team for him to go to, perfect team for him to kind of get involved with. Uh, I want to know what you guys think uh, with uh, DeRozan kind of pairing up with Darren Fox and uh, Sabonis out there. Yeah, I mean, I, I – I think it's a good move for him and for the team. Like it, it, it makes sense. He's he's got an offensive bag, you know, that's still very good. I mean, he's gonna get you twenty, twenty five. He's gonna get you thirty some nights. And I think that's what the Kings were sort of missing was that extra offense. Darren Fox is good in his own right. So bonus does all the dirty work well. But I think this is a perfect fit for them. At the end of the day, though, they're in the Western Conference a loaded Western conference. This just doesn't push the needle for me. I mean, they're going to be a play in team again. Maybe, maybe they'll, they'll survive up to like a five seed, but I, I don't have a whole lot of faith that they're going to be able to compete with the top dogs when it comes to playoff time. Yeah. I'd like to formally apologize to the city of Sacramento and the beam, because when we talked about this about a week ago, Matt, you asked me if, when I, when I said DeMar's going to California, you asked me Lakers or Clippers. And neither of us kind of acknowledged that the Kings played in California. So I yeah, just <laughs> I, well, I said Lakers or Clippers because that's where he's from. He's from LA, Compton. Yeah. But I see what you mean. Yeah. So I just want to throw an apology there. I, I like the Kings. I mean, they're a good team. And I think, I think DeMar makes them a little bit better. I don't know if they have, like Jack said, the firepower to go out and win a ring, at least right now. But you put a few more pieces next to that big three, and you never know. I, I, dude, I like the move. I think they now have elite players at the point. You can play DeMar at the two or three, probably the three, and you got Sabonis in there at the five. So I, it's kind of like what the uh, Sixers did with getting Paul George, right? I mean, they got an elite point guard, elite three, which is, you know, that wing three and D kind of position, and then an elite five and Joel Embiid. So I love the move. Let's see what pieces they put around them and, uh, you know, I, I think they'll be a little better than a, than a playing team. I know you're not as optimistic as I am, Jack, but uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, well, to your guys' point, if they're going to put more pieces around those guys, then, yeah, maybe I could uh, bump them up from a play-in team. But I, I feel like DeMar was that piece that they were bringing in, and this is probably where the buck ends. I don't know. If, it, if this is where it ends, I don't have a whole lot of faith in them, but – yeah, if they can go get themselves another guy or two, changes everything. Yeah, you could see them be like a Mavericks that we saw this year where they hang around and then they go out of the deadline and get like a P.J. Washington type player that brings them over the top. I think I could see them doing something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't hate the move, and I think the, uh, we'll definitely be competitive out there. I mean, DeMar, yeah, sure he is old, but guys coming off dropping basically like 25-5-5. I might be a couple decimals off there, but like basically was 25, five and five last year. So he, he still got it. You know, the, yeah, Kings, they, the way this team is kind of made up right now, they really feel like an in season tournament championship team to me. So I'm going to go out there and throw it out. The Sacramento Kings are your 2025 in season tournament champion. I actually love that. Oh, <laughs> it seems perfect, right? It does wow. seem so perfect. 
So let me get this right, Brian. If me and Matt don't commit to an in-season tournament <laughs> winner right now, it's Mickey Mouse, right? <laughs> I, th- I think so. <laughs> it might be. It might be. But yeah, I'm I'm gonna hold off on giving a giving a future out for the end season. Yeah, I think we have about 300 days until then. So <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll ask you guys in the round table when the season starts up in uh, September. So you yeah, gotta announce. Yeah. There we that go. I think that I think is a way better uh, way to go. But uh, yeah, no, good move for the Kings. I like it. Obviously, over on the Sixers side, uh, they finalized the Paul George. Signing, finalize Andre Drummond, and they also make a sneaky move in prying Caleb Martin away from the Heat, and that's just awesome because he's a guy who always killed the Sixers. He's a great role player. He will be a pretty important piece on that second unit. This is exactly the move they had to make in order to keep bolstering that bench roster, so to speak, because that's that's the biggest key right now is finding scoring when Embiid isn't on the floor. Yeah. Is Tobias Harris going to be in your starting lineup next year? He's on the Pistons. He's on the Pistons. Oh, you guys got him out of town. They ran yeah, him out of town. They, they had no – I mean, he got he got a bag from the Pistons. There you go. Then, got, did, this, did this just happen? It was like first day of free agency, so like probably like a week ago. I think you were yeah. maybe on your flight to Greece. Yeah, I've, I've, I've missed out on a couple things here and there. I got to get myself caught back up. Go watch, go watch the free agency pod with uh with Z my guy. We went we went over uh we, we we did a lot of free agency talk and I don't think we got all the signings. You wanna know what's funny is my YouTube wasn't working while I was overseas. I don't know why. I know YouTube is an international like app and, and website and everything like that, but it, it would not work for me. So I wasn't able to check out the pods, but uh, I'll definitely do my homework and catch back up. Yeah, it's usually the people listening on Apple Music and Spotify are just shaking their heads at you right now. <laughs> All right. Anyway, do we have to touch on Greece making the Olympics here? I think we do. We have to touch on everyone making the Olympics because we finally have a field for the 2024 Paris Olympics. And here the we only can toss out we can toss out a little future for this. Yeah. So I'll I'll quickly go run through what happened today or yesterday when you guys are watching this. But before I get into that, the story of the day, Mark Cuban and the Mavericks front office are absolutely just over over the moon right now because Luca is not only not playing in the Olympics, but the Bahamas also lost. So Clay Thompson will be resting and not be playing in the Olympics. They lost to Spain, led by Willie Herman Gomez, Rudy Fernandez, Sandy Aldama, however you say his name, but on the Grizzlies, like a role player. So Spain yeah. will be back in the Olympics. Brazil is moving on to the Olympics. They uh, don't have much of a team. Their best player is center Bruno Cocobello, and he's has been out of the league since 2020. So don't, don't know if they're doing much. But they, they add to the field of France with Rudy Gobert and Victor, of course. Germany, who are coming off a 2023 FIBA World Cup championship. They got the Wagners. They got Dennis Schroeder. They got a good squad over there. Serbia with, of course, Jokic and Goran Dragic, USA, then Canada. In Canada, they might give USA some issues here, guys. They have SGA, Lou Dort, Jamal Murray, RJ Barrett, Andrew Nimhard, Trey Lyles, the White Pal, and I believe one more shooter. Is Fournier? Uh, is technically, Fournier? yes, but like yeah. I don't know if he's going to get no, Fournier, Fournier, was French. Fournier is French. Fournier is French, yeah. Okay. Uh, and the Kelly Olynyk, so Kelly the Clinic Olynyk will be on Canada. As is well. Aunt Edwards American, dude? I thought he was like a sneaky Canadian guy. He's American. No, nah, he's American. American. Yeah, yeah. He he was their only good player in the FIBA World Cup <laughs> last year. Uh, but then you have South Sudan. No one of interest there. They're going to lose every game by like fifty. Uh, Japan dude. with Rui Achimura and Yutu Watanabe. So don't know how far they make it, but they got two dogs. And then Team Australia, who has been decent. They won bronze, I believe, at the last Olympics. But they're getting old. They have uh, Del Dova, Patty Mills, Joe Ingles, Dante X, and Josh Giddey, Josh Green, Jock Londale, Dyson Daniels, and Duop Reith. So a team full of NBA role players there. No Ben yeah, Simmons? There's... No Ben Simmons and no Matisse Thibel or Kyrie Irving. Dude, it was crazy. Simmons, 2K overall, 
was 89 back in like 2019 and this year coming up his overall is like 65 as it probably should be i, I just yeah. think that's wild dude well the um, defense was probably getting that those attributes up and now he's got the bad back so how good can he really be on d and i'm no, i'm curious good. i'm curious about serbia how old is goran Dragic at this point it's got to be like, mid 30s 36 37 do we really think that like him and Jokic are going to be enough to beat a team like the U.S.? No, probably but... not beat. But the dude, the old the old guys in these Olympic basketball games are always like they they turn back the clock ten years. Yep. Yeah. Don't sleep on Joe Ingles, man. That's that's a that's, Patty that's Mills. what I'm saying. Dude. Yeah. Patty these Mills. These guys too. turn back the clock. So all the 38 year olds out there, I mean, they're the new 28 when the Olympic ball rolls around. I mean. Listen, for all – for the sake of everything American, the U.S. should cakewalk their way to a gold. But beyond that, like, the silver and bronze, you have Germany, you have France, you have Canada, and you have Australia here. All, like, it's wide open. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be a great tournament. If you're watching for entertainment purposes, like, obviously the U.S. will most likely win it all. But, like, second and third places is, is what you – like, will keep you on the edge of your seat. Yeah, I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, France. You know, between Wemby and Rudy, that backcourt is just pretty fucking insane. Or excuse me, front court. Yeah, yeah um, that front court is pretty fucking insane, and I think that they're gonna be a lot of fun to watch together. I yeah. would take the stab on Canada over France, but it's still a total toss up. I mean, I think any of those teams we talked about can kind of get it done. Yeah, I. I... I'll also, I'm sorry for disrespecting Daniel Tice. He is on Germany as well. I'm actually going to go with them getting the silver here, just getting off the momentum of the World Cup championship and Canada for the bronze. There we go. Yeah. All split. All split up and all locked in. So Greece, no, nothing with Giannis. He's, they're going to not make any noise. Uh, they got Giannis and Papa Giannis, and that's about it. I mean, we've seen Giannis is good enough to win a game by himself. He's he's good enough to win a championship basically by himself. So yeah. he doesn't have to necessarily beat the U.S., but, I mean, could we see Greece win silver or bronze? Yeah, I, I think just, for sure they have a shot at bronze. Like yeah. the, the thing with just international basketball, like the rim protecting is – I'm not going to say better than the NBA, but there's so much more emphasis on it. Yeah, so like these Euroleague guys that are be, gonna be playing against Giannis are gonna a little bit more physical, a little bit tougher in the paint. Yeah, so, I, I mean, mean it's I, not think, I think NBA that's Giannis's rest. game. Well, yeah, not, but I'm just saying, like Giannis's game against NBA regular season defense compared to the kind of defense these guys are used to playing now in the Olympics, I think it's gonna be a little bit. Maybe not – tougher is the wrong word, but it's going to yeah. be harder for him to dictate a game. See, I, I I understand what you're saying. I definitely understand. Like, the, the, the international defense is definitely tougher than NBA regular season defense. There's no question about that. But we're talking about Giannis, and he is just a fucking freight train. It doesn't matter who's in front of him. He's going through the paint, you know, downhill, getting to the bucket. And I think with the – I, I would call it aggressive. The more aggressive and I guess like open, physic, more physical uh, game that the international game is, I, I think that he's going to have more opportunity to have his way and just go downhill. Yeah, without all the foul calls, that could also happen. I don't know. It, it's also it's smaller, like the three point line smaller, so there's less spacing. I I don't know. I just I don't think Giannis is going to have as easy of a time as. No, I just figured, you know, Jack was in Greece and we were kind of talking about it. I just felt like we had to throw some Giannis talk in there right at the end. Yeah, Thanasis is the MVP. Yeah? <laughs> By the time this podcast ends, Matt's screen is going to be pitch black. I was going to say, do you guys realize that, like, it's not getting any fucking lighter over here? <laughs> yeah, I guess we didn't address it yet, but yeah, Matt, Matt's power is out. He just moved, so he's yeah. tight. He has no lights in his building. <laughs> so, of course, that's when we have all the travel delays is, the, <laughs> is then we have to start late. But 
it started out good. And as I was starting to notice that too, I was going to say like, guys, like you realize that I'm slowly disappearing out of the frame here. Right. Um, but yeah, all the Spotify legends that listen, <laughs> it doesn't fucking matter. We still got the audio. Um, but go, if you're listening, go watch on YouTube so you can see Matt slowly fade into the so abyss. So you can see me slowly fade, fade as it gets darker and darker here on the East Coast. But that's okay. We got a lot of the good stuff in there pertaining to the Olympics. Yeah, I mean, a couple more things here and we can wrap it up anyway. So not like we have a long way to go. What do you guys got here? I mean, Bronny made his debut. Again, almost $8 million, $9 million guaranteed to a late second round pick. Might be the most ever. I get it. It's the name. It's the dad. He doesn't want to be known because of his father. By default, that's how he's going to be fucking known. So he's just going to have to deal with that. Yeah. Made his debut. How do we think he looked? Him and Don Connect looked absolutely terrible. It's also, it's not even really summer league yet. They're, they're calling it the California Classic or the California Yeah, Challenge. it's it's like, it like is summer league though. It yeah, is. Well, the Vegas Summer League, which the is Vegas like, one is the more that, yeah one that, that, that starts kind of this week. Into. Um, but yeah, Bronny it already has a sore knee. He is not playing. I guess it would be Sunday. So yesterday he did not play. But yeah, I mean <laughs> he's in nepotism traffic, and we'll see if he can prove that he's not just there because of that. Yeah, I mean I remember last year when he was playing his first year at USC and struggling, you know, at the gate, I was saying, guys, he's a, he's a rookie. He's a freshman in college. He's got to get a couple of games under his belt, you know, give him some time to develop. He'll be fine. Well, next thing you know, he just says, I, I was good enough, I guess. Let's go to the NBA. He's just not ready for this yet. Like I, I'm not trying to like hate on him. I like LeBron James Jr. He's cool. Bronny, whatever. <laughs> but He's not he's not an NBA player yet. It's as simple as that. He's a project. He's not gonna help his dad win a championship this year, next year, the year after. He's he's a project. Yeah, I think Bryce James is gonna be the uh, almighty James. He is taller. Yeah, and he's have you seen his highlights? He's pretty electric. Yeah, people do say that he's better than than Bronny, but I don't think either of them are, are ever gonna live up to LeBron. That's <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, but top, top in terms of more effective. I mean, hey, they lasted longer than MJ's kids did in basketball. MJ has kids? Yeah. <laughs> I think they got – I forget who it was, it, but it might have been Matt Barnes. Now. I'm not even going to try to pull out the name, but they got they, – in high school they played against a future NBA player and got absolutely abused, and that was like the last time they got hurt. Interesting. They got All right, what – uh... You got a little MLB, Brian? You wanted to bring up some MLB shit? Yeah, Francisco Lindor should be an all-star. The Whoever, the manager's coaches should be ashamed of themselves. I don't know why Pete Alonso got the bid for the Mets. The Mets should have multiple. Brandon Nimmo should be an all-star too, but it's whatever. Uh, all-star gift to joke. Ellie De La Cruz does not deserve a spot. Um, Ryan McMahon, sure. I guess the Rockies need one, but why? It's it's a joke. The all-star game, I, there's, it should not be used to get players in the Hall of Fame. They should not be used off. For arbitration cases, the All-Star game does not matter. It's clearly just a popularity contest at this point. We saw it last year with the Braves getting Orlando Arcia in. Uh, it's it, it's a, it's stupid. Lindor deserves yeah. it. Yeah, you, know, you shouldn't you shouldn't have that uh, be a judgment anymore, right? I mean, it doesn't dictate the World Series home field, which was like I loved that they, when they did that. Doesn't dictate it anymore, and yeah, it's a, it turns into the NBA where it's popularity. And just, hey, go vote 45 times on your phone to send your favorite player. You know, it's kind of bullshit. To argue yep. million, multi-million dollar contracts, say, hey, I'm an eight-time all-star. And to get more money because of that, when it's because some kid's on his fucking phone during recess voting you in. I mean, that just seems crazy to me that they can use that as, uh, you know, leverage in negotiations. A hundred percent. And we used to, we used to be, to your point, we used to be able to say, oh, this guy was a 10 time all-star and that used to mean something. Now it's just right. means that, you know, you, you're showing off, you know, you, you're flashy in your own way, you know, and that's, that's good in its own right, but it's, it's not, it's not traditional, you know, oh, that guy was a 10 time all-star like that, that used to mean something. Yeah. It doesn't mean shit anymore. 
And it was um, MJ's kids got torched by Eric Gordon for like 50 points. That was uh, sorry, I was looking that up. That's that's that was the NBA. Figure. That's awesome. All right, well, <laughs> I was think fast. I'm I'm now completely out of the picture. Uh, yeah, so um, I guess uh, we're gonna have to skip the four and four hundred today. No four and four hundred today because I am un- can't see me. Can't see Matt. I'm I'm beat. I don't want to do a four and four hundred. I need to go home. Um. It's like 2 a.m. Greece time right now. I'm, I'm beat. I'm beat. That's yeah, fair. I mean, you can't even see my facial expression, <laughs> but I'm sitting in a 105-degree humid room. It's about a fucking heat wave of all <laughs> heat waves here in the Northeast. My power's not turned on because I guess Pico doesn't work on the weekends, and I tried doing it online. Just get a, kept getting like a loading buffer ring that kept circling, and nothing would happen. So I got to get them on the line. Hopefully it's as quick as they just flip it on and we get some AC and power running through here. Granted, I'll be at work, so hopefully they can sort that out. And, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. All right. Well, I'm going to stand with Matt in solidarity, shut off my light, and uh, Brian, yes, wrap us up. Uh, well, my, my light switch is too far away, but from the darkness – I guess I'll yeah, that'd be, be fun there. if we all went dark. <laughs> I guess, I mean, we're going dark anyway. We're closing the show. We are going dark. It's a views from Section 400. I'm Matt, Jack, and Brian. As always, uninterrupted sports conversation. We'll see you on Wednesday or Thursday under better, better circumstances. I'm out. Let's go, Matt. I love America.